no more than Martin Luther King. King speaks Moses' words, let my people go. And his peaceful tribe follows him. Mine too, Heschel, we march in good grace. My people, I say, as I embrace the no longer stranger in this land. My people, as I see children killed for the slant of sun's hue on their face. My people, builders of this land, along with all, every day must choose life, fair and just. And I must speak out for and with King, for we all stood at Sinai. And she rambled on until she noticed I was almost nagging in her face. So she said, I know you think that's below you. And she rambled on till, she, till I almost did laugh in her face. Not because she suggested that I be a waitress, but because she really thought she was giving good advice. And I was really waiting to hear her say, you could scrub my floors. And maybe she'd throw in green stamps. And maybe, just maybe, I'd be able to buy my freedom. This one was written for some paid with good intentions. It is peaceful in protests, marches, and sit-ins, inspired by the Christ and India's Gandhi, and along with the King and to Nelson Mandela. It is a mystic voyage along a road least traveled. Its guiding lights are intuition and inspiration. It has vision and determination. Passive resistance, a path to truth loaded with conviction and motivation. With purpose and mastery, it marches until its goals are reached. It is hard to believe its sure, undiluted momentum. Passive resistance has a stillness. When attacked, it goes weak with a long, silent pose. Its power is unspoken. It has a might that is gently, gently whispered on the winds of time, the path to truth inspired by divine intervention with compassion, forgiveness, love, and devotion. Nonviolence, it invokes peace and the strength of his own intuition and the force of his own stillness. He turned his tongue into a nine violet of Haiti, spit rounds of Holy Ghost into crowds of ignorance, Dr. King. Could lucid dream be progression of a nation? Gave, speech, gave speeches like raising bullets, see how they puncture the hearts of the broken and still manage to fix them, Jesus may have walked on water, but King walked through hate speeches in Salma, torches and hooded men in Montgomery, institutionalized racism in DC, marionette through the, through, the, through the marginalization in Atlanta, we can see that he had no problem walking through a segregated minefield. This was a war that was black and white, but had so much to do with color, like brown bodies that flipped with concrete. The crimson juice of strange fruit, the burgundy bone marrow that lifts arms into, into permissions of submission. He died on the battlefront, a weeping warrior. So now, in Georgia lies an everlasting will of fire, a flickering flame, embers raised like a fist that will immortalize an activist, a dream, a legacy, a king. Thank you. In his father's apartment in his retirement home, it needed a paint job. When I got there, Eyes on the Prize was being broadcast magnificently monochromatic on the scratchy screen. It was Martin Luther King's birthday, and by the time I got the furniture foisted in a corner and the drop claws dropped and the paint in the pan, we were watching fire hoses blast backwards the peaceful protests of beautiful black bodies. The presence and power of nonviolent resistance menaced by men bent and burning with an entirely perverted perspective from my own father. My father, who joined the army in 1959, twirling through time till he landed in Columbia, South Carolina. My father, a military policeman whose primary purpose was wielding his baton against other white faces. 
angry anti-heroes whose war was against change, black soldiers whose only crime was training in a foreign state where the color of their skin was more offensive than the offering of their lives for their country. Breaking up bar brawls and the beat downs on the same beautiful black bodies who wanted to find R&R, &R, rest and relaxation, but found brutal and angry confrontations. I watched the TV from the corners of my eyes where tears collected quietly like developing dew, washing the past in front of me like it was an imperfect past, but past, not present. The beautiful black bodies of my neighbors, my friends, now my students, my community, not past, but present, the perfection of permanent patterns of racism. My eyes were not on a prize, but on a flood of my own tears. The beauty of the words, when all of God's children sang through my memories of growing up in this land of tumultuous turbulence, terrible transgressions against my sense of right and wrong, wrong and right. So that that day in my grandfather's apartment, my father's father and his silent observation of his own day I wept with him openly for the vacancy of our efforts and the absence of our accomplishments. Perhaps someday, somehow since that afternoon, the room slowly transforming from wet, wet white walls to dry, dirty, and dilapidated in 20 years. I've seen that speech by King on the National Mall in Washington so many times, it has become a chorus in my mind, a soundtrack to my teaching, but really, in reality, a rule that no matter what happens, I will fight ferociously for my friends, a people whose king is my king, and a land that's my land. And even though I may not get there with you, but someday we will be able to join hands, our children and our children's children, and know that we are in a struggle for the very soul of our nation and for the very spirit of humanity, and we will someday be free at last.